Hello, my name is Fran, and today we're going to talk about a few different types of mica. So the word mica comes from Latin, um, mica, meaning shining, shimmer, glitter, those sort of words. So if you've ever seen mica, you probably know what it looks like, and you know it's very shiny and reflective. Um, some of the uses for mica um, are all over, so you probably have interacted with it at least a couple times already today. Um, so from your microwave window, protective coatings, weatherproofing, um, any sort of like shiny makeup, um, capacitors, using your phone, TV, um, heating elements and like a curling iron, a stove, um, insulators, all of those are heavily relying on mica. So cool stuff. Um, these guys are phyllosilicates, so those are going to be your sheet silicates. And they're called sheet silicates because um, they have perfect basal cleavage. And if you've ever played with mica, again, you can basically pick it off into little thin sheets um, as much as you want to your heart's content. Um, so starting off, we're going to use biotite. And so biotite mica is a dark brown or black um, in color. And then here is our formula. Um, you can see all these formulas are very similar, but there's some variation. Um, and so this is a high iron and magnesium rich mica. You can find it in igneous rocks, um, so like granitic plutons, gabbros, sienites, pegmatites, um, and you can also find it in metamorphic schists, gneisses, and phyllites. Um, this guy was named in 1847 by J.F.L. Hausman in honor of John Baptiste Bio? Bio? Don't know, um, it's French, so, um, but this guy was a famous physicist, astronomer, mineralogist, very sciencey guy at the time, um, and he was doing research on the optical properties of mica. Um, so you can find this in Europe and New England, but you can find it so many other places as well. Um, there's a bit of it in Colorado, New Mexico, Wyoming. Um, so it just depends where you're looking, um, but it's pretty common. For muscovite, that's going to be, actually, let me pause real quick and show you a piece of our biotite mica. So you can see it's got that dark coloration. Our second one is muscovite. Um, this one is like silver. Some of it has like a little tint of a gold sheen. Um, and then here's our formula. So this is a high aluminum mica. Um, and so you can find it similar places, um, igneous rocks, granites, veins, and pegmatites. Um, and then you can find it in metamorphic rocks and gneisses and schists. Um, this was named prior to 1794. That was our first like named example. And that was um, used by Johann Schmeiser. Um, and that name was coined basically because of Muscovy glass in the Muscovy province in Russia. They used these giant sheets of um, mica like glass in windows and things like that. So that's how that sort of happened there. 4,000 years ago, it was mined in India um, for medicine, which that's kind of bonkers. Um, and the Mayans used it in their construction um, to make their temples and their clay bodies shine and give off that beautiful glittery light when the light hits it. Um, and then there's also, so we had it mined around Moscow for the windows. Um, you can find it pretty much everywhere as well. Um, so the main players here are India, Canada, New Hampshire, Connecticut, and Maine. Um, I know, for example, there's a pass in Colorado and one of the bases of the where the rock got blown out is just like pure muscovite. Pretty crazy. And I can show you an example of that. Um, here is a specimen of aquamarine um, joined onto that silvery mica there. Let's see. Do -do -do. Um, and so next, um, we're going to do some halite. So this is kind of a lilac y, purpley pink. Um, rock and it gets its color from the lithium in there. So here's our formula. It also has rubidium, which is pretty rare. You can find the pitolite in lithium bearing pegmatites, some quartz veins, 
Um, overall, pretty similar trend. Um, this one was discovered in 1861 by Robert Bunsen and Gustav Kirchhoff. Um, so that's a cool story too. They were doing research on rubidium, and so they um, mined out a bunch of lapidolite to extract that rubidium, and it led to the actual discovery of rubidium. So cool thing. Um, and it comes from lepidos, which is Greek for scale. Um, it originally had a different name, which was um, lilac or something like that, coming from the color lilac. Um, you can find this in like, Canada, Japan, Madagascar, California, Maine, New Mexico, and Australia. Um, here is an example from New Mexico. So here we have this big hand sample. It's also got a lot of smoky quartz in there, but you can see kind of these areas of the purpley pink shininess, and then this is appetite here. And um, also just another note on this one, lithium is a big player um, from like your car battery, your cell phone battery, um, depression meds, all sorts of stuff. And it's getting pretty like highly mined in the States. Cool stuff. So that's one of our contributors for lithium. And then last but not least, um, I have never really been a fan of Lothopite um, until recently. Um, but this one, so all our micas are pretty stable under high temperatures. Um, it's a lot easier to get muscovite than lycopite just because of the amount that is found out there. Um, but flocopite is more stable at higher temperatures. So um, this one's more desirable, but it's so much more expensive um, to source than this one. So we're using muscovite for most of our um, industrial uses. So flocopite is a reddishy, orangey brown mica. Um, I do not have an example of it. I am lacking a piece, so I'll have to get one. Um, but the gemmier varieties um, are almost this really pretty like gold color, and they fluoresce, and just beautiful crystals. Um, and then here's our formula. So as you can see, similar to the rest. So we can find it in igneous rocks, um, so as the rest, and then metamorphic. Um, but this one you'll find it mostly in magnesium-rich limestones and marbles. Um, and that was named in 1841 by this guy. I'm not even going to try. Um, we'll just call him Johan. And that was from the Greek logopos, which means fire-like. Um, would definitely encourage you to look up a picture. It's pretty cool. Um, and you can find this in Finland, Sweden, Romania, Canada, Switzerland, Italy, New York, California. And then those gemmy ones I was talking about, there's a lot of really pretty ones coming out of Pakistan and Afghanistan. So I think that concludes my video for today. Um, like and subscribe if you feel like it. And thank you so much.